Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm gonna be doing some seed starting. I'm starting some cool season vegetables. That'll be lettuce, broccoli, a couple other things. A few of these cool season vegetables like beets, I just plant directly into the vegetable garden. I did a uh, vegetable garden uh, prep uh, video maybe two weeks ago, putting some compost over here so it's ready to go when, once these uh, seeds uh, once these seeds come up, I, d I start all my seeds indoors uh, under uh, fluorescent lights. And I've got a video on the channel for that as well from three or four years ago when I built that light rack. These cool season vegetables you can do outside uh, if you want to uh, just start them in some sort of tray or open tray in a milk jug, whatever, whatever technique you wanna use, you can start these outside. I find a little more consistency and starting them inside on the light rack, and that's why I use it. So again, you can start them however you want to. Uh, the purpose of this video is really, this is the time uh, for me to start some cool season vegetables a little early for my warm season vegetables. So I'll wait another two weeks or so for peppers. Uh, I've talked about several times on the, looking on the back of the packets of seed and seeing how far it, how long it is from starting it from seed to transplanting it in the ground. Some things are four weeks, some things are six weeks, some things are eight weeks. I organize my seeds that way. So I know exactly coming up what I'm going to be uh, starting. Right now it's cool season vegetables. About two weeks from now, I'll do my eight week um, uh, seeding, which is gonna be, again, peppers mostly. Uh, and then a couple weeks after that, things that take about six weeks because my average last frost date's around the middle of April. And so I wanna have my seedlings ready about that time. That's the purpose of all this. I use these 50 cell trays, um, which I've shown many times on the channel. They're heavy duty, they're, they're reusable, I can wash them each time. Some of these trays I've had for, uh, this actually, these four actually happen to be new because I bought a box of 100 of these 15 years ago. I mean, and reuse them over and over and over again. And I still haven't used all the, the new ones even once. Uh, great trays, um, you can carry them with or without a bottom tray. And again, you can reuse them over and over and over again. Uh, if you're germinating seeds outside, these trays have holes in them for drainage. Uh, and you can just use them like that. Uh, if you're bringing them in the house, you need a bottom tray that's solid. So each of these will sit in a solid bottom tray. I'm trying to shift away from using peat moss, but I have this one bag of germination mix left. I've had this bag for a couple years. It's, in, uh, it's, been, it's, been, in the, it's been in the shop. So I'm using it, I'm using it up. And then when you see me do more, um, uh, more seed starting videos uh, in the next few weeks, I'm gonna shift to a compost and perlite or a compost and pine fines mix for my uh, seed germination. But I am using up the last of the peat moss uh, that I have in this video. Are you supposed to be back there? I don't think so. I don't think you're supposed to be in there. A dustpan makes quick work of transferring one of these bag products into these, uh, into these trays. If I'm gonna use compost later, I probably need something a little more heavy duty uh, than, than a dustpan. Uh, I like to fill the trays outside. Uh, I give them a little bounce uh, to settle it, settle the material down a little bit, then put a little bit of extra on it. Uh, the, uh, um, when I use the compost and pine fines mix, I typically have to water from the top. The peat moss allows it to wick upward. Again, I'm gonna phase out using peat moss, but um, I'm able, you just saw I was able to uh, water, you know, just inside the tray and it'll wick the water up. Also, the advantage of watering outside, you'll find out whether or not your solid tray has a hole in it, um, which this one is dripping like crazy from that corner. So I know I need another solid tray uh, for that one. So do these projects outside and then you won't make a mess uh, inside. So let's start some seeds. So now I'm down to the seed part. I'm gonna show you a couple other tools uh, that I like to uh, use. Again, you can go back and look at that video on the, uh, you know, how I constructed the light rack. You don't necessarily need a shelf with four lights on it. You can just buy one set of, uh, of, of lights and just hang them over a table uh, inside. And, you, and that's probably enough to do three or four trays at the time, which is enough for most people. I mean, if you go back and look at my, all the seeds I'm going to start this season, I need more shelves than that. But probably one shelf is good enough for anybody. Or again, uh, just try, you know, try them outside. I do have a timer. Um, this was a little inexpensive timer. It actually came two in the box for some reason uh, from Amazon that I use. And it allows me to, the lights come on at six in the morning and they go off at six in the evening. So I have it at 12 on, 12 off. You can put it for 14 on and uh, 10 off, but it's an inexpensive, your light plugs into that, this plugs into the wall, uh, done, uh, done deal. I also like to have a little, little teeny tiny pair of snips on hand because I use, I'll do multiple seeds in each of these uh, trays. Some of my seeds are actually from 
you know, a year or two old at this point. And so I'll put a couple seeds in each cell, but I don't want two broccoli plants in each cell. So after they germinate and they're up about an inch or two, I'll decide which one of them seems more vigorous and the other one will get cut out. And it's easy with this uh, little teeny tiny pair of snips will keep you from uh, damaging both plants. Um, it's kind of a little surgical thing you have to do just to thin your cuttings later, but a teeny tiny pair of uh, snips uh, is, good, is good for that job. Okay, so the things I am actually starting today, again, beets go directly in the ground. Most of your tuber uh, type vegetables, beets, uh, carrots, they would be planted directly uh, in the ground. Uh, best not to, you can germinate them in here, but it's best not to disturb, um, disturb them once they're in the ground. So that's why they get planted directly. Uh, I am, uh, I'm doing some kohlrabi. Uh, I've great success with kohlrabi in the uh, last couple of years. If you haven't tried it, um, it, it's good and it's good and it's good in a lot of different things uh, broiled uh, really great doing a couple types of broccoli I'm a hair late starting my seed on broccoli so it, it just as soon as I can get uh, these uh, the these up and uh, rooted out enough for me to transplant this broccoli is going in is definitely going in the ground as quick as possible sometimes my spring here in Raleigh North Carolina uh, Sometimes we can go right to 90 degrees really quickly. Not great for broccoli. So um, I want to get that in the ground as quick as possible. And then I have three types of lettuce uh, that, that are going in. That's the main thing. Um, I've got a, a butter crunch lettuce. Again, I went over all these seeds in a uh, what I'm planting this season video recently. Um, I've got some romaine lettuce and I have another bib lettuce. All three of those came from Johnny's, but I buy from Johnny's. I buy from Baker Creek. I buy from Park Seed. Uh, you know, and uh, Home Depot. <laughs> so lots of different places. I'm, not, um, I'm doing two different types of kale, a Russian kale and a kale called Black Magic. And I'm doing some collards. My collards, I already did a crop of collards in the fall, harvested those uh, and on much larger plants. These probably don't have enough time before it gets really hot. So these will just be uh, picked as you, with younger leaves and they'll, be, they'll, they'll just be cooked that way. And then I've got some pop choy. I've really had great success growing uh, pop choy the last uh, two seasons out here in this in this garden, and they're great greens. And so this is just a big mix of greens uh, plus some broccoli and plus some beets going in. The now that I've got my trays filled, um, most of these most of these seeds are are pretty teeny tiny on almost all of these cool season uh, vegetables. All I do. Um, on teeny, teeny, tiny seeds, and this will actually just flat out be hard to see um, uh, on these lettuce seeds. They're, they're really, really super tiny. I'll take two of these and just set them on the top, and then I'll just push them in gently, okay? So uh, that's the process. Bigger seed, I'll make a little bit whole, and you can do that with the back of a pen or a pencil or whatever you want. You can make a small indention, put your seed in there, and then cover them up. But with these little, <laughs> Uh, teeny tiny seeds. Again, I'll just set them on top and then I'll push them in. So it's really a straightforward, simple process of putting two, two, maybe three seeds in each one. Again, they'll have to be thinned later and then pressing them down gently, lightly covering them. A lot of the seed now is coated. And so you'll see like on a lettuce seed like this, broccoli, whatever, there'll be a, a an outside coating on the seed. Those seeds are not meant to be covered. And uh, that's one thing I've actually had to learn the hard way. I've um, just assumed that uh, all the coated seed was exactly like any other seed. But any, if you buy seed and it's in a strange coating, it just sits right on top of the uh, right on top of the soil, and that's it. So again, this is super straightforward. Uh, I always end up growing way more <laughs> than I need or want, and you know, give lots away. But uh, um, it's kind of hard to control it. It's fun. It's super fun germinating seed. It's super fun growing your own food. And um, I always end up, like I say, I always end up overdoing it. I'm going to hold myself to one tray of lettuce. So that's 50 lettuce plants. I've got three varieties. So I'm going to do like three rows of one, four rows of one, three rows of one. I'm going to do an entire tray of broccoli and then a, uh, an entire, a, a tray that's mixed between kale and kohlrabi. And, uh, and that'll be it for my cool season vegetables. I have a ton of things left over from my uh, days having the nursery and the garden center, including that bag of uh, germination mix out there. I also have a lot of these little four inch plastic labels. Um, I had a box of a thousand of them when I closed up and I continue to use them. You don't have to buy um, plastic labels. In fact, I'd encourage you not to buy 
new plastic labels. Uh, but these, again, these were for sale at my garden center and I just, I've kept them. Uh, you can actually take a, a, a pop bottle, a Coca-Cola plastic bottle and actually cut it up into strips and use that. Um, it works great. Uh, you can just cut them into you know, pieces that are similar to this and, uh, uh, and use those. You can obviously use little wooden sticks. Uh, make sure you're using a garden marker, something that won't bleach out. If you use any other kind of marker, uh, this marker is specifically for being irrigated, uh, you know, water on it constantly in the sun and, you know, cold and hot and everything else to make sure it doesn't wash away during the season. Uh, and again, even these plastic ones, if you have these, uh, you can cut them in half, which is what I've been doing with these to make them last forever and ever. And you can actually go in here and scrape words off of them and reuse them. So there's a lot of different ways to not, you know, uh, to not spend money on any of this. Uh, but uh, I'll write the name of the uh, lettuce that, I, uh, that I'm uh, planting. And I always want to mark everything. Everything needs good notes um, with the, you know, and I'll put the date that they're being, that they're be, that the seeds going in um, and I'll put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the corner here and I'm going to do three and then I'll put one in the corner for the next one and I'll put one in the corner for the next one. I want the variety and the date written down uh, in the tray that will follow out into the garden. And if I finish this season and go, man, that, I did not like that particular bib lettuce. I'll now know the name of it uh, so that I don't use it again. Or if I'm like, hey, this is the best one ever, I can recommend it to you guys. So I do like to keep track of what I'm using. Um, I try new seeds every year, but there's some that I like to carry over every year. And then there's some I never want to buy again because they just underperformed in my garden for whatever reason. Swiss chard can actually be planted directly in the ground as well. And it benefits from being soaked. Uh, so look at the back of the package and see that. Um, some of the things that I'll be planting later uh, peas, beans, squash, cucumbers, a lot of those things can benefit. Uh, the, the ones that I direct sow in the ground can benefit from some soaking because a lot of times the quicker you can go from planting it in the soil till it coming up, the better because you may have squirrels or whatever trying to, you know, trying to mess with them. So, um, so some do benefit from soaking. So I'll soak these, uh, the Swiss chard before I put it in the ground. And I actually do some Swiss chard uh, in the house as well, because I, I germinate some that go in containers just as decoration. So now I have a lot of work to do. I've got to finish planting uh, these trays. Uh, once the uh, seeds are in them, they'll go onto the uh, light rack inside. It'll take about a week to see most of these things germinate. Uh, probably in the second week, uh, I can go through with my snips and trim down to one plant. The reason I use the snips to cut out the extra plants is uh, if, you, if you go in here and try to pull them, Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes though, you'll pull all two or three or whatever's come up in the cell and you'll damage all of them. So it's easier or better to go through and just cut them out with the snips. It doesn't take that long to thin them. Uh, once they're up for um, a week and a half or so, I'll start mixing a little bit of fish emulsion into my water when I'm watering them. And uh, that'll, get them, that'll get them jump started after about three weeks, these are going in the ground. They need to be in the ground sooner than later. I'm here in zone 7B. Um, uh, those of you who are in zone five or six that want to do some lettuces and things, you're probably a week or two, um, but, you know, a couple weeks behind me. Uh, those of you in eight or nine probably need to be on this, uh, on the, on this, on this pretty quickly. If I've left anything out of this video, um, ask down below and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll answer as many of the questions as I can. Um, I'm about, again, about two weeks away from starting my some of my flowering things and my peppers for sure and then a couple week jump again and a couple week jump again on some other things so thanks for watching